Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in our new 2021 video series with the President. My name is Janet Spriggs and I'm the President here at Forsyth Technical Community College. This afternoon I am pleased to have with me Dr. Stacy Waters Bailey and Dr. Waters Bailey is the Executive Director for Student Support Services in our Student Success Division here at Forsyth Tech. Welcome Stacy. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here today. Yes, it's good to see you. We had the opportunity this morning mm -hmm. to spend some time together and uh, meet with Jim Longworth on Triad Today uh, to talk about what we're going to now talk about for this video series, which is our work around Forsyth Tech Cares. Yes, yeah. we started Forsyth Tech Cares. Uh, Really, it, it launched officially in March of 2020. Mm -hmm. However, um, the work, the groundwork really began long before that, mm -hmm. but before COVID, when we realized that our students needed more support than just tutors and um, the assistance they were getting in the classroom. They needed more mm -hmm. holistic support. They needed the non-academic support. And so we were having conversations about how to support students through those life happens events. Mm -hmm. Then of course, March 2020, life happened, <laughs> life life happened, happened to all of us. Yeah, yeah. The pandemic hit and we realized that more than ever, our students yeah. were needing our support and they needed our help. And so we started putting together the non-academic holistic support services that we now have at Forsyth Tech. And it includes things like childcare and transportation assistance. We provide food assistance as well as um, housing uh, issues. And then we have uh, added other things because of COVID, mm -hmm. like technology, mm -hmm. getting them access to Chromebooks and hotspots right. and all types of life happens issues. Yeah, that's wonderful. It has been a huge effort, a phenomenal effort led by you and, and other members of your student success and your student support services team. But you've done a phenomenal job. Um, if I recall correctly, March 13th, Friday the 13th of 2020 was the day that all things changed and we realized that our world was gonna look much different. Um, we took a two week spring break and we put everything into a remote environment and that is really when this whole thing began. We created for Scythe Tech Cares. We didn't really have any external funding or really know exactly at the time how this was all going to play out. We had a plan though, right? And we, we had we had some um, some feelers out and had been working with uh, some funders to potentially help us continue that. So in that first initial phase of Forsyth Tech Cares, tell me how, how things started. How did students get in touch with you? What kinds of things were you seeing they needed? How did we handle the funding? Where, how did we get started? Well, we had some wonderful volunteers across mm -hmm. the college who stepped up and started answering a phone. We got a dedicated phone line for students to contact us. Mm -hmm. And so people are answering the phones and taking messages and taking information down. We also created a form that was available on our website so that mm -hmm. students could really reach out to us all hours of the night mm -hmm. and all hours of the day and basically give us the information about who they are, mm -hmm. what their problems were at that moment, and how we could get back in touch with them so that we could help with their, their life happens issues. Right. So we really started seeing the biggest concern when this started was food, of course, because so many parents were then at home with their children and they were not necessarily used to providing three meals a day for their kids every day. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know what your experiences are, but when a child is at home, they right. tend to eat a lot more oh, than yeah. when they're even at school during the day. Mm -hmm. So they were having that um, complication. Many of them lost jobs, many of them had hours cut, and there's just not enough money coming in. Mm -hmm. We also saw that the students, um, as we switched to remote learning, they didn't have access to internet mm -hmm. or computer at home. Right. So we had to get the devices in their hands so they could continue with their education. Okay. And then the other bigger piece was we saw that so many of our students were struggling with their own mental health. Yeah. 
I mean, it was a very hard time. They were mm -hmm. isolated. They had a lot of worries and concerns, and they needed somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. um, and luckily, we had our counseling services available for those students, and they were providing students with over the phone and then virtual counseling sessions to make sure that we could a were able to take care of them as a person, um, holistically, emotionally, mentally, um, and just making sure that their families yeah. were okay. The whole student and their families wrapping around around, right, to yes. take care of whatever they needed. And so then we were very fortunate because Kate B. Reynolds Charitable Trust yes. believed in what we were, what our model was built upon and the data that had indicated to us how much of a need this was. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had a great grant from them of $440,000 and we've just continued this program since that time, grown it to now we have a food pantry through a we new do. partnership. We do. Yeah. We partner with Second Harvest Food Bank, and they are providing us with the non-perishable foods that we have at our Forsyth Tech Connect locations. We have one on main campus and then one at our Transportation Technology Center. Mm -hmm. We hope to grow that, but that's where we have started. Mm -hmm. um, but those pantries, I really think of them as um, free stores because they have right. so much more than food. It has school right. supplies, it has personal hygiene items, it has household items that you need like laundry detergent, toilet paper, paper towels. Right. Um, so these are all things our students need. They can come, they can visit, they can take what they need. Mm -hmm. um, and we have been so um, thankful for Second Harvest stepping in and said, yes, yeah. we can help you. Yeah. Um, we have also been able to create another partnership recently, and mm -hmm. that's with the um, Wake Forest yes. University Law School. We're so excited about that. So we are now um, partnered with them, and through their uh, community law clinic, we now can send our students to them to get assistance for non-criminal court cases. So Wonderful. anything from consumer law to landlord-tenant issues to immigration issues they can help our students for free. That's fabulous. That helps the law student and it helps our students. So what a great real world experience for both. That's fantastic. So we now have been at this for almost a year. We've learned a lot. We've expanded a lot. We have CARES navigators now who are case management workers that really understand our students' needs and understand how to connect them to the resources that they need, whatever they are, yes. right? And we don't turn, no no need is a bad need. Is that right? That's Every true. need is, is welcome. It is. They teach, treat each student as an individual. It's uh -huh. a student, case by case, they work them individually because we know every student's life and needs are very different. And yeah. so we work with each student, making sure that we connect them either with internal resources or our external resources that we are um, creating partnerships with yeah. and making sure they have what they need. Right. Understanding that we can't be everything for every student, but we can find partners that can help us meet those needs for students and knock those barriers down so that they can be successful. Absolutely. So how? tell me impact. How many students have we served since last March? And how much money have we, uh, <laughs> has that cost us, do you know? Actually, we have served over 4,000 students. Wow. 4,000 yeah. students. We have loaned over 350 um, computers and hotspot devices. And wow. we have spent, um, I believe, just shy of $400,000 yeah. supporting our students. Wow, that's amazing. And that's not necessarily, that's not college money, right? It's 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 private money. It is private um, money. And donated money that we've been able to, again, meet those needs. Yes. So what do you think for the future? Last, last question, I guess. What do you see, how do you see us taking Forsyth Tech Cares from here? What's next? What partnerships are on the horizon? What ideas and, and with imagining without boundaries, what does this look like for us as we grow? The next piece I would like to tackle is healthcare. Many of our students are uninsured or underinsured, and so healthcare mm -hmm. can be a challenge. I'd like to partner with a uh, local healthcare group and provide a minute clinic on campus that can wow. support those needs. Yeah. We know we need COVID to kind of um, be mm -hmm. under control, and once that happens, we can give our healthcare providers a little moment to breathe, mm -hmm. and then we can start having those conversations about how we can um, take care of our students and their physical health as well. Yeah, that's awesome. So I love what you've done. Stacy. thank you for your leadership. Thank you for putting together this tremendous team of CARES navigators and others um, within your division who are under, who understand so well that our students come to us for an education, 
but they have barriers that are non-academic as well as academic. And so the work that you are doing is so integral to our ability to help them succeed. Um, I just can't tell you enough, uh, thank you enough for that hard work and for all that you're doing. Keep those ideas going, um, keep brainstorming, and keep working on those partnerships so that we can make sure every student comes here and leaves successful, having having done what they in, what they intended to do and more when they leave. Well, thank you, but I have to really thank my team and all of the college who have stepped up and, and mm -hmm. really helped with this project. That's great. If someone needs, if someone's watching, if a student is watching or a prospective student is watching and they need to know how to contact Forsyth Tech, Forsyth Tech Cares, what do you tell them? I would say you can call 336. 734-7195 or they can reach out to ftcares at forsythetech.edu. Okay, ftcares at forsythetech.edu. No matter what they need, no matter what. give us an opportunity to help them, mm -hmm. right? And um, keep in touch and let me know as you develop these partnerships. And also, if you're a faculty or staff member, we need to let our faculty and staff know they can reach out as well yes. to refer students and to let us connect with the students who need us, is that right? That is right. We just yeah. need every student to find us so that we can help them. Perfect. Thank you, Stacy. Right, I appreciate you. it. So that's our conversation today about our Forsyth Tech Cares program and all of the great work that we're doing to help meet every student where they are and carry them as far as they can go here at Forsyth Tech, your place of promise.